My name is John Ryland, and I'm the director of the Christian Healing Mission. Welcome to this video in our Opening Heaven's Door training series. And the aim behind this series is that we produce videos to help you engage with the ministry in which you are involved. We want to help you reflect on that ministry, to think about it, and especially to think about how we can be the very best we can be in our involvement in this prayer ministry. Now, I do think we need to be constantly reflecting on what we're doing, partly because we're probably dealing with people who are, are, are very, very hurt. All people are constantly asking questions about God. And we need to be feeding ourselves to make sure that we are the very best servants to them and the very best channels for God to use. Now, I've called this particular video New Beginnings, because January is traditionally a time when we think about new things. You know, it's a new year. We're probably all hoping for a better year than last year. There are always new year resolutions that are often broken just as quickly as they're made. But I think despite all that, there's still the excitement of the promise of something new. There's a beautiful verse in Isaiah you know, concerning new things. He says this, see, I am doing a new thing. That's what Isaiah, I didn't catch his God whispering in, in, in Isaiah 43, 19. See, I am doing a new thing. I thought we might look at that. What does that have to say about the ministry in which we are involved? I guess we all like to think that there's something new around the corner. There may be a new wave of God's power, of God's healing or something like that. But what if the new thing has already happened? What if the new thing that God is doing is a wonderful continuation of what he set his heart to do since the coming of Christ 2,000 years ago? At first sight, this might seem a bit strange for us to be quoting you know, a new thing. When actually Isaiah spoke those words about 2,500 years ago, how can we still be talking about a new thing. What's that all about? Well, when Isaiah spoke about that new thing, what was he seeing? What was he glimpsing? And I wonder if what he was glimpsing was in some way the coming of God in Christ, the arrival of a Saviour so wonderful it was going to change history. And we're now living in the new age of that saviour. And it's tempting to think that because this was a new thing about 2,000 years ago, it's not particularly new anymore. But actually it still is. It's touching new people in every new generation. And maybe more relevant for us is it's touching new parts of the people for whom we are praying, new parts of us. So at the heart of this, there's a I think a stunning message is this, God isn't finished with us yet. I wonder if you remember the story in John chapter 5 when Jesus heals a man who's been paralysed for 38 years. Jesus learns about him and heals him. It's a beautiful story, but actually Jesus isn't finished with that man yet. Despite the beautiful miracle. Jesus finds him later and carries on a conversation with him in a way actually that makes that healing go deeper. He does something very similar in John chapter 9. Once again, Jesus does something stunning for a man who's been born blind. But when this healed man is rejected by the leaders, Jesus again finds him and speaks more to him. He hadn't finished with him, and nor has he finished with us or for those for whom we pray. His work within us is still part of that new thing he's seeking to do. And that new thing is the constant rolling wave of God's goodness, a wave he's longing to pour out on everyone. Whatever has gone on before, whatever God has done in our lives, there is still more. Let's look at that, especially in our role as prayer ministers. 
I think we, as Prime Ministers, have a real part to play in helping folk grasp the truth that God has not finished with them. You know, people coming from ministry may have been coming to him over a long period of time. And it may be that they're not seeing much change happening. Well, part of our ministry as Prime Ministers is about encouraging folks to continue to believe that God has still got more and more for them. I think this is especially true of people who might be thinking that God isn't really doing much in their lives. He is. They might just not be seeing it because they're, they're not looking for it. You know, suppose someone's been coming up for prayer for months over maybe a physical issue and nothing seems to be happening. Well, it's so easy for them to get discouraged, impatient, even angry with God. Because it seems then that God, who could be doing everything, is seeming to ignore their pleas for help and is making them suffer needlessly. Well, I think part of our ministry is to help people see beyond that. To help them take their eyes off their immediate pain, encourage them to stop staring at the thing that's not being healed, and to give them the desire to ask themselves, I think was a very brave question, what else is God doing? And there's always a question we need to have at the back of our minds. We pray for people who may not be getting the answer they want. What else is he doing in their lives? It might need to be a question we ask ourselves as well. Because maybe we as prayer ministers are, are seeking for God's healing. And it may not be happening. We might be getting discouraged. How can I minister when God isn't touching me? Well, again, that question, well, what else is he doing in our lives? The trouble is, I think, if we don't think that way, well, what are the options? You know, could it be that God is not really interested in people? Is he really just a bit bored with them, constantly going on about their, their aches and their pains? That doesn't seem to be, you know, it didn't seem to sound like God. Is it a fault of us as prayer ministers? Is there, you know, more praying we need to do, more fasting? But actually, you know, this is his work in us. It's not about us. Or, or maybe it's the person themselves. Maybe they need to have more faith. If only they could find that faith, then they'd see the breakthrough for which they are longing. Well, for me, that puts a lot of pressure. I just don't see Jesus doing that in the Gospels. It is convenient, I think, to put pressure and blame on other people, but that doesn't seem to tally with Jesus, who is revealed as being one who didn't break bruised reeds nor did he snuff out smouldering candles. That's what Matthew says about him. It seems more likely to me that what's happening in those moments is God is at work, but he's doing something else. We need to help people discover that. You know, I often say we can be very good at, at judging a prayer session by whether we could get God to do the thing we think he ought to do. Perhaps it's far better to judge a session by whether we were able to create the space for God to do what he wanted to do. And that might be very different from what you know, we think. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 3.18, he says these words, We are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory. That's the vision God has for his people. It's about him bringing his transformation to every part of us and to those to whom we minister. In one sense, it is nothing new. It's the same transforming God, but it is new because he's touching new parts of us all the time. I think one of the great strengths of this ministry happening in a local church rather than, say, at a conference is it in a church we can walk with people over a period of time? It isn't the case of, if God doesn't do it now, then we've missed the chance. There's actually always tomorrow. There's always the next week and the week after. He's not giving up on anyone. 
There's also something here, I think, about our attitude. You might be new to prayer ministry, or you might have been doing it for a while. But it's not uncommon, I think, for a certain weariness to settle in, especially if you're you know, part of a church ministry team and, and maybe you're seeing the same people week after week. And maybe they're, they're sharing the same story week after week. And you may not be seeing the outcome or the change you'd really like. And it can be quite hard to stay motivated in, in moments like that. That's why I think it's so good to keep reminding ourselves Whatever results we think we might be seeing or not, we are still part of this new thing that God is doing. Every time we pray for someone, we're part of that rolling wave of goodness that was unleashed at the time of the coming of Christ. You know, if you go to the beach, it's not uncommon to find like pieces of smooth glass. Usually these started as pieces of broken bottles. And over time the sea washes over them, the sand rubs against them, produces something smooth and beautiful. But that's the ministry in which we are involved. You know, we're part of this new thing that God is doing. We're part of that rolling wave of God's goodness. And when people come for prayer, it may well be, that this week is different and it provides that moment of breakthrough in a person's life. Or maybe it's like that tide sweeping over the sand and over that broken glass in a constant way that eventually will bring the change. Either way, our calling is to be ministers of this new thing that Christ has ushered in. Now, I don't know if you had a chance to watch last month's video but one thing I shared in that was that none of our ministry is actually wasted. What Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58 is this, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You know, all those prayers we pray, all the times we spend ministering, it counts, it does something. We, we may not see the results to our prayers we'd like, but we are caught up in something so new, so extraordinary, so revolutionary, that every time of ministry in which we are involved is bringing a touch of God's transformation to another person in whom he delights. So to summarise, we are called to a wonderful ministry. Something begun by God when he sent Jesus to this world. Something that's about the, the total transformation of this world and actually everyone in it. And we need to help people catch that vision of what God wants to do in their lives. Whether it's the healing they're seeking or maybe something else. We need to catch the vision of what we're involved in. That every opportunity of ministry is a chance to further increase the scope of this new thing to which God has set his heart. So keep going, keep being encouraged, and keep being an encouragement to others. And as you keep coming back to this ministry with joy and hope in your heart, that's what they'll catch from you. So until the next time, take care and God bless.